Chair recognizes Senator Campbell to speak on the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. As a government, state government, we're responsible for the general welfare of our state. The sanctity of human life is a principle that government should proclaim at every opportunity. There should not be a trade-off in the name of hardship, be it cost, time, convenience, or any other reason, for life of the unborn or safety of a woman or her health should she undergo any procedure. This bill encourages abortion doctors to be more responsible and accountable to women, which is what physicians should do, which is what the public would expect. It's a false assumption that TMA or AMA speak for all the doctors. They only speak for a fraction, not for a whole. As an ER doctor, of 23 years, I have seen both the physical emergency complications from abortion as well as many of the emotional complications. Scientific evidence is present that the baby feels pain at 20 weeks or five months. The pain receptors are completely developed. Brusso, 2008, International Anesthesia Clinics. Derbyshire, 2010, Best Practice and Research Clinical Obstetrics and Gynecology. Rollins, 2012, in Gregory's Pediatric Anesthesia, just to name a few. The literature is replete with scientific evidence. You know, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but not to their own facts. Let's talk about the facility. Why have lockers? Because they change their clothes and you put them up in a locker so we don't contaminate the environment of the operating room. A janitor's closet. How many of you want to go have a procedure where the dirty mop is in close proximity to the operating room? Airflow systems. It's for the purpose. Anybody who's mixed IVs, TPN, uh, knows you've got to have special airflow to keep infection down. That's what we're asking when we're talking about an airflow system. It's about decreasing the risk of an infection. Backup generator. Does anybody want a procedure to be in progress when the electricity goes out? The electricity needed at the least for an abortion procedure includes cautery to stop bleeding, suction, lights, a monitor for vital signs, is a backup generator really too much to ask to help protect a woman's health and safety in a procedure? Wider halls. Why would we want a wider hall? I haven't found a gurney yet that turns well, especially around a corner. You need a wider hall and wider rooms to bring a gurney in just in case there's a, a complication or an emergency. Is it needed every day? No. But how many lives or complications do we have to have before it mounts up to enough reason to put forth some dollars to protect women's health. There was no legislation brought forth in the 83rd regular session that asked to decrease the standards of ambulatory surgery centers. Why? Because who would choose a substandard facility to have anything done? No one. Here are 800 affidavits or declarations of women who had abortions in the state of Texas. They're speaking to complications that they had. Medical science shows us that the baby feels pain, as I said, and for every week a pregnancy continues, it gives an increased chance of survival for the baby. We also know the increased risk of common um, excuse me, increased risk of complications for the mother the more, the further along the president, the pregnancy. I want to see, and I think all of you would be on board with this, see less complications, less affidavits of complications that someone had with an abortion procedure. This is common sense legislation that we should all get behind. I strongly support the pro-life legislation and this legislation that helps promote 
the safety of women when they're getting, when they choose an abortion. And I strongly urge the members to vote for this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Campbell. Chair recognizes Senator Rodriguez to speak against the bill. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, I respectfully rise to express my opposition to this bill. And Senator Patrick, let me tell you why, since you asked why would anyone vote against this bill. First and foremost, as we have heard, a woman's right to access health care, including safe, legal abortion services, is constitutionally protected. First and foremost, it's the law of the land, as you said. What we are seeing here today, it seems to me, is a thinly veiled attempt to eliminate that access. This is not about women's health, members. It's political medicine with a little scientific or with little scientific or medical basis. And in my opinion, it represents an extremist agenda that is contrary to the beliefs of most Texans and most people in America. Commentators, as you know, have said that this is the most restrictive abortion legislation in the country. I think that uh, rejection of all of our amendments, all reasonable in my view, is a confirmation of this. The so-called fetal pain provision would ban abortions after 20 weeks. Now, I've seen the pictures too. I'm a father, and I understand the emotional attachment that begins with a pregnancy. But we are not here, members, disputing emotions. We are here to determine the best public health policy, the most constitutionally appropriate way for government to intervene in people's lives, yes, intervene in people's lives for the public benefit, in this case, a healthy population. Our guide in this endeavor should be the most accurate scientific medical information that we can obtain. The portion of the bill that deals with fetal pain becomes a measure of faith because there is no conclusive medical evidence. Indeed, the evidence is largely to the contrary to support this concept. Our faith, Senator Patrick, is our own and it is dear to us and each in our own way, but our Constitution mandates that we cannot impose it on others, whether they believe in one deity or many or none. Requiring health clinics that perform abortions to be certified as ambulatory surgical centers, which would foreclose all but five of the 42 clinics that perform abortions in Texas, including the two clinics that we've mentioned in El Paso, is medically unnecessary and simply amounts to harassment. That's why healthcare groups and medical organizations representing providers oppose it as they oppose the other unnecessary and intrusive provisions. How can proponents of the bill claim it's about women's health when healthcare professionals oppose it? How can proponents of the bill claim they are for the Constitution and then impose faith-based proposals on everyone? How can people who oppose government involvement in health care on the grounds that it is intrusive go to such lengths to intrude upon women's bodies? There's a bigger picture here. From destroying the women's health program during the interim when the legislature failed to pass a proposal in 2011 to the governor's veto of the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act this session, we have failed to truly support women and life for that matter. Although we have some of the worst rates of childhood indicators, poverty, literacy, dropout rates, not to mention teen preg pregnancy as has been said already, we do little to address those issues. Senator Nelson, do we care about life after birth? Is a question we should be asking ourselves. This bill places an undue burden on women, especially low-income and minority women. 
From my district, El Paso in West Texas, women would have to travel hundreds of miles, take days to do it, and spend huge amounts that they cannot afford. There are many proven strategies to increase access to health care, reduce pregnancy, and reduce abortion. And these include things that we've already talked about, annual well-woman exams, counseling on pregnancy planning, and access to birth control, screening for breast and cervical cancers, testing for hypertension uh, and tuberculosis, and screening for sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. Yet, the bills and amendments I and others have filed today were ignored. Ignored were bills to expand Medicaid to low-income women, remove medically inaccurate language from state-sponsored health literature. I offered the amendment on that. Repeal the literally invasive sonogram law, requiring state-funded crisis pregnancy centers to prove, provide scientifically accurate and evidence-based evidence -based information, give th teen moms the legal ability to consent to receive contraception, require comprehensive and evidence-based sex education, extend the Women's Health Insurance Program prenatal coverage from 60 days to six months. What happens when women cannot access health services? We know what happens. Illegal and unsafe abortions are going to skyrocket. More people will cross the border for dangerous abortion-inducing pills from Brownsville to El Paso and from within the rest of the state. Members, 1,500 women died while getting an abortion in 1940. That number dropped to 33 in 1974. And each year since 1980, the number of deaths from illegal abortion has been between zero and two. We should not go back to the 1940s. These proposals in front of us may suppress legal abortion, but they will not enhance women's health, and they will not stop abortions, and they will only make them more dangerous. Members, political medicine is bad for the health of women. Our constitutional republic and the lives of Texans, and it's part of a pattern of oppression that at various times has afflicted women, people of color, the LGBTQ community, the poor, the powerless, and the least among us. For these reasons, members, I stand with Texas women in opposition to this bill. Thank you, Mr. President.